Wow, good morning to you. The sun is starting to rise, and uh, this is what our view is out behind the shelter this morning. And uh, I actually went back to the shelter to go get my camera. I was coming down to get water. So, nope, got a, video, got a video of this. So, beautiful morning this morning. Good morning to you. Well, good morning. We think today is day 51, and we are up and out from Tunnel Snob Shelter. This is the view from nearby. Man, it's gorgeous up here. I'm glad we've got good weather. Finally today, I know we've been teasing you for a while. Finally today, we see the Grayson Highlands. Uh, it's gonna be windy and it's gonna be cold, uh, but it's gonna be beautiful. I'm so looking forward to it. And we do have a special treat up for you just here in a couple of minutes, so please stay tuned. And uh, we'll check with you just shortly. All right, so it is really cold out here. It's in the 20s, I'm sure. But one positive is uh, all of this muck right here that we would have been traipsing through yesterday is frozen solid. So we're not up to our ankles slipping and sliding in mud. And I'm very confident that we're gonna get uh, down through Grayson Highlands without uh, having to deal with this slushy mud. And hopefully, once we get out of the Grayson Highlands area of Pasquale's shelter, we'll be back in the woods and we won't have to deal with this mess at all. So for that, I'm very grateful. Uh, but it did make it awfully hard to get up and get out of the sleeping bag this morning. Slept okay last night. I woke up one time, I don't know, about 1.30 or so, and uh, I was kind of cold. I had left my puffy off, and uh, that's, that's my down jacket it's got a hood on it so uh i left that off and i, I pulled it on about 1 30 or so fought the urge to have to get up and answer the call of nature did okay with that finally got back to sleep so slept really well last night eventually but i am kind of glad that all of this mucky stuff is frozen this morning legs feeling fine this morning um Seems like it's getting a little bit better every day. Also, for which I'm very grateful. And uh, I think Hawkeye's foot's doing okay. We're gonna try to pound out 16 today and set us up to uh, maybe get into Marion tomorrow. I don't know, we had, that's a day earlier that we had planned. And if we do it, it'll be a really, really big day for us. Close to 20. Uh, we'll just have to play it by ear and see how things go. It'll be reasonably flat and uh, you know kind of once we get up to this little top up here this isn't gonna be too bad of a day either so we'll see how things go hopefully we'll be able to move up the trail with a little bit better speed today than we have in the last few days well that's kind of where we're headed over in that general direction I don't pay attention to where I'm walking where I trip over a whole bunch of rocks and ice which i thought we were going to be done with i really thought it was going to be 40 degrees last night or 35 i was wrong but uh it is what it is oh holy cow there's some ice right there yeah we're going to put the phone up and be really careful but i did want to show you oh my gosh what a view right there all right so we were hoping for the big reveal and we can't find it anywhere but we are standing on the spot where we should be 500 miles today yeah. So fist bump to us, 500 miles. Thank you guys for supporting us and for following our trip. And uh, if we see the actual 500 on the ground, I'll absolutely stop and take a picture of it. But it should be right here. And uh, the only thing we can figure is we're so early that nobody's put one out yet or I don't know. But anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you at the trail. All righty, we have our first brush with ponies earlier than I thought we would. Honestly, where's the Crest Trail? Where's the Appalachian Trail? Uh, all right, there's the AT going that way, but we do have to go over and see the ponies. We'll see more, I think. But, uh, yeah, that's the crest trail going there. I think the AT goes back up around. So which way is the AT? It looked like it was up that way. Oh, is it there? All 
So that's what Grayson Highlands is known for is these uh, wild ponies up here. So we got the first view of them today. So the trail comes up and over to this. And uh, if you've ever wondered why we do this, ta-da. That's it. We're going to go right over here. We'll cross another little hill right here. And then we'll have some incredible views of the far side of here. This is what makes uh, the Grayson Highlands Rank really highly among most through hikers' favorite sections of the entire Appalachian Trail. And it's one of mine too, even though it is close to home. So I'm gonna close down and uh, get over this and I'll show you another view here in a second. All right, even more views up and over that little bit. It's a, a rocky trek, but uh, it's worth it. It's gorgeous up here, as you can certainly tell. In our videos. Uh, actually, I'm just as well that we stayed over last night and we've got all afternoon to, uh, or all morning to enjoy these views and I'm really, really happy that the weather cooperated with clear weather one more day so that we'll have these gorgeous views up here at Grayson Highlands State Park. As I said, most through hikers regard the Grayson Highlands as one of the prettiest sections of the entire AT, and I would have to concur. It's not far to drive, and you can day hike this. Uh, actually, I say not far to drive. I don't know where you live, but where I live, it's about an hour and a half. And uh, I'll show you later on where you come up into the area. You'd have to hike the opposite direction to get to where we are now. You'd have to hike southbound from the parking area, Massey Gap, but uh, an absolutely gorgeous day hike. Uh, I'm quite confident that we've not seen all the wild ponies that we'll see. They'll be with us off and on for the next hour or two. And uh, it's just gonna be a gorgeous day of hiking here. We are truly, truly blessed to be out here. I just got off the trail. I took the road less traveled over grass instead of rocks but let me get back over here on the trail proper so that we're hiking and camping on durable surfaces if you watch my damascus videos you uh may remember me showing you a picture of the seven principles of leave no trace and that's the second one is to hike and camp on durable surfaces so that you know you're always using the trail you're not blazing new trails you're not trampling down grass that way you leave the area as pristine as possible for people who are coming in behind you. Continuing on through the Grayson Highlands, this spot right here is called Fat Man's Squeeze. Let me back out just a tad. So we could go around to the left over here, but that's no fun. The trick of it is, can you squeeze through up here? So uh, later on up the trail, we have the Lemon Squeezer, but this is called Fat Man Squeeze. And I'm gonna see if I can, uh, oh, actually, I don't know. I'm gonna come up here and look. There's quite a bit of ice in here. I'm not real keen on that. Uh, yeah, there is quite a bit of ice in here. I think I can get it. We'll see what happens. Foot there, foot there. Uh, really wish I was left foot forward right now. Fat man squeeze. Yep, fat man squeeze, Hawkeye says. And that is correct, it is. That man squeeze exacerbated with a sheet of ice right there that's not too terribly slick. It's kind of rough. It is, but it's safe. Hawk, I said that's a lot of ice. I don't know whether you can hear him behind me or not. But uh, I'm making my way through. I think that's the worst of it. Of course, I'm sure that when I come over to the other side, there's going to be a solid sheet of ice that I have to reverse no steps steps are good i can do steps uh there's a little bit of ice right there but i think with my poles uh, there's the ice down there i think with my poles i can sit here and using my arm there and then i've got stairs coming down and i have made it so far uh, 
I have made it through Fat Man Squeeze and Hawkeye went around the Fat Man Squeeze. I'm already hurting, isn't that ice? Yeah, he's already hurting. He said the ice looked treacherous. So, anyway, continuing on up the trail. Well, pulling out the old wild card today. We just came to this little rock outcropping no more than 100 feet from Fat Man Squeeze. And we've got views for days. Yeah, so this is, this is why we do this. And as I said a minute ago, hey, you can do this too. This is an easy day hike, or at least a relatively easy day hike. Uh, it's in uh, Southern Virginia, not far from Western North Carolina. So if that happens to be where you are, hop in the car, look up Massey Gap, and that's where you need to head. Well, still moving forward. Some of this stuff is starting to thaw. We'll be kind of skirting around that. I don't think we go directly over that, but we're gonna be heading that direction shortly. Right now our trail's this way. Passing several day hikers today. Uh, one had an App State t-shirt on, so I gave him a big thumbs up for that. It's my alma mater. Uh, we stopped at uh, the gate back there and I had hiked out with my rain jacket on just to block the wind and it did a great job. Uh, but it's starting to warm up now. I have dispensed with the gloves. Unfortunately, it is warming up to the point that this stuff is thawing out and getting kind of nasty and disgusting. But I think if we go about another half mile or so, we're going to be out of this and uh, kind of back down in some woods where there's not just icky, silty mud. We'll see what happens. And you'll be there with me. Well, more ponies. Well, hey, pony. How are you this morning? Let's get closer with the comb with the camera. Alrighty. Just having a little breakfast, I think. We may still see some more. But who knows? I, I was kind of hoping that once we crossed this road right here, we would be out of the mud business. But alas, that's maybe not the case. But it won't continue for too long. That's where we were a little while ago. And we kind of come down along this ridge line right here. And uh, made a turn and now we're coming back to, towards the camera now. And we're going on behind us. But uh, beautiful day. I've seen quite a few day hikers. There were several that came down from this section. And uh, I'm sure we'll see others. But uh, anyway, moving on up the trail. Well, here's one of our creeks for the day. This is not the big one. I think it's a little eddy right down here. It's kind of warmed up by this stuff over here. The rest of them over there are really kind of cold. But uh, we've got a bridge over. We're not far from Wise Shelter. We'll take our lunch there and then plow on forward. But uh, we're going to show you that. And uh, we'll be off heading towards the shelter. Well, we have arrived at the Wise Shelter. We're going to take a picture of the inside. It's like we've got nobody here, but there's a bird. Last time we were here, it snowed on us quite unexpectedly. But uh, we'll pause here and have a bit of lunch, or at least a bit of a snack, and then we'll head on out. Well, this is the walk away from Wise Shelter, and uh, kind of another first. Uh, we're still in the state park. There's no tent camping allowed here. Although my first reintroduction to backpacking as an adult, we were coming this way and uh, we actually tented out in this little field right here beside the shelter. Uh, I'm not sure whether we knew there was no tent camping or it wasn't posted or maybe they changed the rules since then. I don't know, that was, I don't know. It's been six or eight years ago or more. And uh, we came on a group trip with some folks from our church and a neighboring church. It was a lot of fun. We realized we were really out of shape. We didn't have the best gear. I was way too heavy, pack-wise and me-wise, but uh, it was a fun time. So this was where we kind of got reintroduced to backpacking. We're gonna head down here and get a little bit of water at Wilson Creek, and then we're heading on out. Our next landmark will be the scales. Um, I've forgotten now how much I told Gavin we were doing today. I think it's like 10 and a half more to, uh, the hurricane shelter shouldn't be too bad of a hike if you can 
glean anything at all from the elevation profile. All right, so this is Wilson Creek. I don't think it's the same Wilson Creek that we have close to our home, but uh, it's a really nice water source nonetheless, beautiful. And we have been provided a bridge. And when you are tent camping, you're supposed to cross the bridge and you can go up on this little hill right over here and camp there. But, uh, I'll show you this going across as best as I can. And we're gonna pause over here and get a little bit of water. But we're about to leave the forest and head back out into the open again. We're headed towards a uh, place called the Scales. It's a big corral. Um, there's some information about it down there. But I wanted to show you this. This is a cattle gate. Um, so looking from the top down, sort of, you can see how I can go around and through there, but uh, livestock can't bend tightly enough around this curve to get through. So there's quite a lot of these along the AT when we're passing through fenced in areas just to mitigate the chance that somebody will leave a gate open and let varmints out or varmints in, what have you. That's probably the fourth or fifth one of those we passed in the last day or so. And I keep meaning to show them to you and it's just never been convenient. So there you go, cattle gate on the Appalachian Trail. Well, this is my view right now. As we come across this kind of open area, there's some cattle up there on the hill. Probably walk past those later. You can see when the trail gets out into the open areas, sometimes it's marked with posts like this. There's several of them looking forward here. And uh, I believe we're about to be at the scales. Could be wrong. Maybe a little, maybe, maybe one more ridge. Not certain. But. Uh, I'll let you know when we get there. But it's been a uh, fairly uneventful hike so far. We've been a couple of day hikers, actually three, mom, dad, and son. Son looked to be about 10 or 11 years old, maybe not quite that. We're gonna be out till Tuesday. I don't even know how many days that is from now. But uh, anyway, I wish them a good hike. So they, were, they said this was their first trip into the Grayson Highlands. So they were able to check off the ponies and we are able to see all the sites here. Really, really great place to come hike. I highly recommend it. As I've said several times, most hikers rank the Grayson Highlands as one of their top two or three best places along the AT. And we certainly have been blessed with great weather to traverse this area today. I don't know if you hear this. The wind is whipping, but uh, just come up with some other ponies up here down into the scales just under this ridge right here. Try to zoom in a little bit tighter. It's going to go to digital. It'll be a little bit more distorted. Okay. Smudge it around and have some lunch. Go for that. Trail goes on up this way and I'm more and more sure now this is probably gonna drop down into that little corral that they call the scales. I'll show you when we get there. Well, I've come to the scales. This is a big corral area. Um, there's some information about it I'll share with you. It's over there underneath that uh, awning there just ahead. But this is a common place when I've been here to uh, pause and uh, just kind of chill for a little bit. There is a facility over here that is better than most of what we find in the woods. And uh, sit down and have a glass of water or drink water and move forward from there. Okay, here's some information about the scales. Um, i trying to see if I can get it to where the glare of the sun is not so bad. Not going to happen. But I'm kind of using the sign to get in the lee of the wind. You can kind of pause the video right here and read a little bit about it. Still used. It's a camping area. There's a, a bear box right here beside. You can see it copper colored down here. So we could have camped here, but we're not going to. Well, probably going to be a longer video today, today than normal, but we got moss and rocks. Have to. Beautiful, beautiful. There's a big one right there. And uh, we're just kind of meandering uphill a little bit. It's not been too much of a stress. And I think this may be kind of the significant up before 
we reach the old orchard shelter. Not where we're planning to stay tonight, but uh, our next landmark. Oh, the trail's gonna turn somewhere. I just saw a double blaze. Oh, there it goes, to the left. So we'll go to the left one time. Well, we just passed the road. Um, I've forgotten now the name of the crossing. There's a little horse campground area and stable area for people to stage horses out of. And uh, we've got this nice little creek right here that we're gonna cross. And we start going up, but not too, not too severely, I think. Um, but I didn't want to take just a moment get this last little bit of creek in here. I don't know if we'll get another one today. Absolutely gorgeous right here. And we have a branch, so thank you for having me. Well, we're taking our last few steps of the day. The pole's tangled up in the road and entering. Uh, we're closing in on Hurricane Shelter. And I'll show it to you when we get there. I think we're pretty close. We were looking at the top of the hill and it was a mile. I hope I haven't passed it by, but I don't think I have. We just came across a creek over here to the right, which I think is our water source for the shelter. So that's the, part of my reasoning for thinking it's still up here on the left somewhere. But uh, anyway, good day for hiking. Uh, big day for hiking. We'll recap here when we get to the shelter. All right, as I mentioned earlier, I'm sure I'm really proud to see this bear, back, uh, bear box right here. Uh, hurricane shelter's behind me. I'm going down to get water. And I was right, that creek is our water source. So I was going to show you a couple of places about bear hangs. Um, when we were here before, two people lost their food that night. And uh, one of them was on that limb right there, which I would consider an absolutely perfect throw for a bear hang. How the bear got it, I have no idea. Uh, the other one was on a tree down here. I think it's the same tree. It may not be, but I think it is. Um, it was a little sapling then. It's probably a little bigger now. But with something like this, they had hung it up in this little tree here, or, or one like it, and I could have bent the tree over and gotten the bear food out, of, or the food bag out of it. But uh, anyway, since then, I think they closed the shelter for a little while uh, after we were here, and they've since brought in bear, uh, bear boxes, so that's a good thing. Well, I'm gonna take one more video here before we go to bed. Hurricane shelter behind me. I'm kind of blocking the folks that are there because I haven't asked them if I can video, but it's a place we stayed in 2019, and uh, we're hoping to have a better experience so far as not losing any food to the bears. That's not gonna be an issue because it's all in a uh, big steel box, so we'll be safe tonight. And uh, we appreciate you joining us for day 51, I think is today. It's about time to tame this thing. But uh, anyway, we'll have another video out for you tomorrow morning. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.